Yes. Now the Beatitudes are the attitudes you should be. Right. You got that? Yes. Now when you understand the words of Jesus, these are the words preparing us for the eternity. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecute the prophets before the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, good stuff. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Father, we thank you for these mighty words of Jesus. By, by Jesus beginning his preaching on, on that mount, which represented the new Moses, Jesus was absolutely turning the world upside down with these first words out of his mouth. And in the rest of the sermon he gave up there, people walked in awe, but also we, they walked away and said, how can anybody live that? And when Jesus said, every word he gives us is possible only if he lives it through us. So bless us, Lord, to live it through us. And we ask Mother Mary that you intercede for us right now, that we be drawn into the mystery, especially as we see um, uh, we invoke you under the title of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. We want to welcome you, and the people that joined us this morning, welcome, it's good to have you with us. Now, the blessed are the meek. Okay, now, just give you a background. Do you like background? Yes. To understand what Jesus is saying, and what the crowds are listening to, remember I told you last night, there was a Roman general called Pompey. Everybody say Pompey. Pompey. P-O-M-P-E-I-I. -I. Pompey. It sounds pompous, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I wonder if his mother would call him pompous. But it was Pompey. Pompey is another word. Pompey. Yeah. yeah, or also Pompey. Uh, Pompey. In fact, there's a lady of Pompey in Italy. Okay, Susan, you know, our lady of Pompey in Italy. Okay, and I've been to Pompey, Italy. Okay, uh, um, and one of my Italian friends at St. Mary's, Ah, Nostra Signora de Pompey. Okay, so, so, so we, we have... Uh, uh, sometimes it's spelled P-O-M-P-E-Y, Pompey. So, the general. Okay, so now Pompey comes in, Pompey comes in, and when he comes in, he takes over. The Jews don't have a land anymore. So what are they hearing when Jesus is saying these things? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. So what are they thinking immediately? So. It's their land, and who's taking us over? How many ever heard of the town Nazareth? Yes. The term Nazareth uh, means the, from the sprout. Isaiah 11, 1. And that's where Jesus would come from, something that was dead. How many know that was a Roman garrison? You know why it had to be a Roman garrison? Because somebody had to get up and announce that you have to, we're all being taxed. And you have to go down to the place of your birth. And so can you see why Mary and Joseph were in a town of Roman garrison? So do you think it was really a nice place to be? Now here's another interesting fact about Pompey, uh, about uh, Nazareth. Do you know in Nazareth, there's only about 300 people that live there. Only 300. And guess what? 
there was a tribe up there which Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were part of. So they all lived, they all knew each other very, very well. They knew Jesus, they knew Mary, they knew Joseph. So when you hear the expressions in Mark 6, is this the carpenter's son? Yeah. Is Mary his mother? So that's where they got, because they were so little, and only 300 people. And I guess you can get to know 300 people within a short space of time, or you pump into everybody. So what happens is when Jesus speaks these words, everybody is shell-shocked, okay? And when you leave these words, it's never for the external. You see, many people have religion for the external. I told you many times, I could be a very rich man if I had religion for money. And right now in the United States, don't ever believe a priest saying to you, don't ever believe it, I don't have any money. Don't ever fall for that one. <laughs> I mean, what he does is he gets rich old women, take them out for dinner, and he reaches for his wallet, oh, let me pay. And she pays. She goes, oh, no, Father, I'll take it. And the priest says, praise God, it worked again. <laughs> Okay, so now Jesus says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. So what are they hearing? Is he going to overthrow the Rome? Is he going to overthrow? Amen? Amen? Now, in the year 132, Jerusalem was so invaded again, and they wanted to wipe out all forms of religion. How many ever heard of that before? By the way, we're, we're facing toward right now a one world religion. Does everybody know that? Yes. You're not allowed to talk about Jesus. You can talk about Muhammad and read the Quran, but the major attack, which we're going to find out about, is Christianity, by the way. That is the main target of everything you're going to be facing in a few moments as you leave these stores. Everything is against Jesus. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. So now, in 132, 135, there was, there was a king called Hadrian. And he wanted to wipe off Judaism off the face of the earth. So he killed every single Jew that he could imagine. He forbade circumcision. And he would kill women with their children. I mean, it's just a total wipeout. Things haven't changed, right? And so Hadrian comes in. And in fact, Hadrian destroyed in his lifetime 985 towns in Israel. He wiped them out. And so, you can see the Jews, when they hear Jesus say these words, it's like, wow. You're going to give us the land? How did they expect Jesus? Now, how many ever have a problem with God? You ever have a problem with God? Mm -hmm. I do. I get mad at God. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Because He made me an emotional person. So, you don't see me now, but when I walk up, they what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's Santa go, <laughs> How many know that's normal? Right? I get really nervous around those people. Everything's fine. <laughs> All is well. <laughs> All the time. Forget it. Now, he says, blessed are the meek. Now, what does it mean to be meek? It means to be gentle. Gentle. Now, I was raised by a single mother. My father died at, when I was eight months old. And she taught me how to be a bull in a china closet. <laughs> My mother is the only woman in the world when the bank line can be going out the door. In three minutes, she's right up front. <laughs> <laughs> and she's complaining to all the people. Yip, 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 yip. And before you know it, she's right up front. <laughs> <laughs> Mama is precious. Okay. Mama is precious. So, so if you see me like a bull in a china closet, blame my mother. Okay, now, now, when you're meek, when you're meek, understand what Jesus is saying by this. You don't assert yourself over anybody. Mm -hmm. How many think you can pass that test? 
<laughs> now, remember the Romans are in control. And so what's Jesus saying? Let the Romans be the Romans. What? And they had a group called the Sakari, And they had a sword. A sword in their hand. And they said, you know what, Lord? A good Roman is a dead Roman. <laughs> Amen? So Judas is thinking, I'll help you out. I'll sell him, and he's got to do something with his power. Amen? And Judas said, hey, Lord, I'll be your PR man. <laughs> Amen? That's what they thought Jesus was going to do. So now, how many have interesting people living with you? Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> so to be meek means to be under control. That you don't lose it. Now remember, as believers in Jesus, when somebody curses at you, you can't curse back. Amen? When someone insults you, you don't insult back. How many think you can be meek now? I'm going to lose it. Um, how many ever pushed your buttons? Well, here's what you do. Take your buttons out. Be buttonless. I never heard myself say that either. Okay? Now, to be meek means a gentle breeze. Right, amen? Gentle. Gentle. Now, it means to be docile. Go this way. And All right, how many are docile in the Holy Spirit? Amen? It means you have an incredible power that's not asserted. And your power not asserted on doing evil is your greatest strength. How many want that kind of power? Okay, amen? Amen. 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 I, I told you I was walking Jersey City one day. You ever hear Jersey City? Yes. I'm walking Jersey City and I saw the Jehovah's out there. And I said, Lord, those people aggravate me. And Lord, I want to go up to one of those Jehovah's and smack them silly. In Christian love. And Lord, I won't bother them. But they were knocking on my people's door and I didn't like that. So I said, Lord, if they say anything to me, I'm going after them. So I'm walking by. So I'm walking by this clan of Jehovah's. And inside I'm going, and so I'm walking by I said I'm not going to say anything until they say something to me but I'm saying say something to me say something to me say something to me like give me one of your tracks come on come on it's time. and all of a sudden one Jehovah lady says hello I said that's it I'm going right after and I chased her around the block she said, I said, don't you dare tell this house. Jesus is a living God. He's going to get to the Lord's right when he's going to open the mic. Oh my goodness. I was not meek. <laughs> I was angry. <laughs> Amen. Don't bring me near Jehovah. I, 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 my blood goes... <laughs> Amen? Amen? Now, it's rooted... Uh, uh, Jesus' words are rooted in Psalm 37. Uh, that you've got to wait. Trust in the Lord. How many ever have a weight problem? I don't mean a weight problem. I mean a weight problem. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Is she, is she all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I mean, so, anybody have a weight problem? W-A-I-T? Wait. 
Yeah. You, you don't like? How many, anybody, anybody have a trust problem? Now, what it means is, uh, meek means to yield, to hold together. Amen? Commit yourself to the Lord. It means power under control. Now, everybody here is a noble son or daughter of God. Amen? Amen. Tell the person next to you, you look pretty good. You look pretty good. But you'll look better later. Amen. So, how many need your, how many need Holy Spirit power under control? Now, I'm so grateful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but I'd like to use a few of them again, then the wrong way. Get them, Lord, and knock them out. Amen? Now, it means, um, when Moses said, he, Moses is the meekest man that ever lived, Numbers chapter 12. He really, I mean, when you're leading people, you've got to have under control. How many ever had kids? You know, when they're, when they're 17, they're called aliens. Okay, yeah, and when they're 17, I am 16, going on 35, they become aliens. Right. Amen? Anybody have a few aliens in your house yet? Okay. Okay. You were an alien? Okay. Avon definitely, and she hasn't changed her name. So, Moses starts saying, who am I? How do I have all this power in me? But meekness means I will never put confidence in me. How many think you could pass? Now, what does confidence mean? How many think you're confident in God? Are you confident in God? Okay, are you, he's still cold. Okay. Confidence. Everybody say confidence. Confidence. When you're confident, it means you walk in the presence of God. Whoa! Okay, there you are, standing there loving me, whether or not you should. Presence of God. So, every one of these Beatitudes is your present presence. You got it? Your present presence. You got it? Okay, now say that. Present, 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 present. present. Okay. It's your present, present. Now, Moses would say oftentimes, the reason why, he, because you and I have to face Pharaoh. Exodus 4.20. When you face your Pharaoh, and that's the person in your life who wants to be ruler over you. How many have people that want to run your life? Anybody meet them? Now, these are usually called grown kids in their 30s. <laughs> Amen? Wait till Dominic grows a little older. He's going to start to try to rule your life. Watch, watch this. Amen? Watch what happens. And then when it happens, he's going to say you have four daughters. How many know they want to rule your life? Amen? How many know they want to tell you what to do? How many know that when you're around tech, technology, they don't think you're too bright, right? And, and they can do it for you, amen? Anybody got those, those kind of people? And you should do this, and how come you're doing this? And my mother's stubborn, she doesn't know what, and sometimes they're arrogant, and they start doing this little guilt trip thing on you, and you're, how many know that these people make you feel stupid? Anybody meet them yet? Okay, now Moses, the, those are the pharaohs in your life. And Moses says in chapter... In chapter 4 of Exodus, verse 20, I don't know how to speak. Now, there is a belief he was a stutterer. But did you notice, if you follow the account of Exodus, did you notice that when he got to Pharaoh, Aaron never spoke? Did you know he just shot right in there? And he started throwing down the snakes and everything else. You know, the stamp became a snake. Did you notice that? And so, you're going to face your Pharaoh. And then the Pharaoh is going to try to control you. Now, if you and I don't have my power under control, guess what will happen? You'll lose control, and the power of someone else will take over you. And so that's where you find yourself at. You know why you're so messed up right now? How many of some of you are messed, stressed, and depressed? The, the reason why you're messed and stressed is because someone is invading your, your space. Amen? A purpose of a retreat is, I need my space. I need to, to, to think. Do I hear amen? Now, Jesus says the next thing here. All right, we just gave you the background, right? Inherit 
the land. Now, what are they thinking of? <coughs> They're thinking of, remember we just gave you that little tiny background. What are they thinking? Well, Pompey, Pompey, whatever, just took over the what? Land. land. So he says, okay. so they're like, does he mean we're going to get it back? Does he mean, and they're like, hmm. Now here's what it means. Here's what the literal Greek says. It means you're going to receive your allotted portion. Did you hear me? If you have power under control, you'll get from God what he always wanted to give you. Did you hear that? Yeah. Now, when you have the allotted portion, guess what happened with the allotted portions? This is really good stuff you're getting. The allotted portion means when the tribes of Israel went in, everybody got what was theirs. Okay? So now, when you study the Beatitudes, you're going to discover that everybody gets what's theirs. Amen? Amen. So turn to the person next to you. I am rich. So I never have to sing that song. Hey! I'm rich. Because I'm going to get my inheritance. So what does the Greek mean? It means, what does Jesus say? You will receive your pot of, uh, your allotted land. Good stuff? So when you look at life, and you look around and say, I don't got nothing out of life. What did I do? Stay faithful to the Lord. Everything's coming out of the wash. Amen? Amen. Now, in Psalm 149, verse 4, the psalm says, only the meek are saved. Well, that's, that's a strange thing. Only the meek are saved. Psalm 149, verse 4. Only the meek are going to get it. Amen? You've got to be under control. Under control. Uh, amen? Amen. Under control. How many have ever bit your tongue a lot? Okay? Nobody here. Very good. Now, <laughs> it means that I, I, now, how do I know I am meek? Ready? Let's do your meek test. Amen? I am meek if I realize I have no ability to save myself. I am meek if I realize I can do nothing without God. I am meek if I accomplish nothing by myself. I am meek when I... I am meek when I, I get mad when God is dishonored. How many ever had that? Can I be honest with you? Shh, don't tell anybody. What I see going on in some churches, do you know what I want to do? I want to do Jesus in the temple. Turn the tables over. I don't believe when you go to Mass ever in front of the church there should be any form of gambling. Even Girl Scout cookies. I love the Girl Scouts and I love the chocolate mints. <laughs> but put the girls in the hall. Amen. The Girl Scouts will be selling their cookies in the auditorium. And you better get up there and stop being cheap and support the girls. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But there should be nothing for you going into the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because every time I go into churches, I just see Jesus going... Amen? Amen? So, how many here get angry when you see God's dishonored? It just does... It just does... Now let me tell you something. All the holy people, like Mother Teresa's group, uh, the Friars of the Renewal, um, did you notice if you've been around them long enough like I have, they never desire money. They never use God's name in vain. Like when you're around the Friars of Mercy, they'll say, Mercy, mercy. They sound like a cow in heat. Mercy. <laughs> Amen. But there is no desire on their parts ever ever, and when God's name is in vain. Yeah. Whoa. Well, I get angry. All right. You're meek if, if, if you, um, you receive criticism very well. Mm -hmm. How many are meek? Mm -hmm. Are you meek? No. Wait a minute. Let me, let me bust this cherub over here. You're meek if you receive criticism very well. Mm -hmm. 
That's not good. Yeah. Oh, she's she's on the pens already. Yeah. Okay, now <laughs> I am meek when I am finished with myself, and everything that I've done is for the good of God and the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So, how many are meek here? How many need a little polish right about now? Amen. 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 Everybody can raise their hand. So. That's meekness. Is that good or what? Yeah, ouch. ouch. <laughs> All right, we have some ouch in there. Now. And that's good to ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Right? When, you, yeah. when, you, when you hear an ouch inside yeah. of you, you hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Bible never condemns us. It convicts us. Amen. Okay? So that's something that say, are you a meeker? Number two. The next line is those who what? Hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. Righteousness. This is what? Okay, for my name's sake. Now this afternoon, we're, we're going to have a little meeting with each other. We can break into little groups. And to talk about which beatitude really speaks to you. Okay? Amen? We'll tell you about that more in, 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 in after Mass. After you eat again. <laughs> now Jesus speaks of hunger and thirst. Okay? Now, how many here eat every day? <laughs> now you're ready to say to the person you look like you eat every day <laughs> now and we Filipinos eat five times a day so I, I was working with Filipinos in Farmingdale, Long Island I was doing their day renew in Farmingdale, Long Island you ever hear of it? And I didn't know the Filipino customs. I gave talk one at 9 to 9.45. I said, all right, let's take a little freshen break. And all of a sudden, all the Filipinos are scrambling around. So they're bringing out all this food. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? We're eating. I said, what? And then at 11. And then we packed up our talk number two, began at 10. And then I gave talk number two. And all right, now we're going to, uh, we're going to break again. <laughs> and I pulled the food out again. <laughs> yes. That's true. That's true. I said, what are you doing? And let me tell you, Filipino women eat more than me. <laughs> and we know what they say? Sadaf, sadaf. This is good. Now, Jesus now barrels in on us on our basic needs, hunger and thirst, right? Now, when you say hunger and thirst, these are desperate hunger. You know, how many say, I'm starving? You don't look like you're starving. Amen? Amen. Thirst, that means you're parched. Really parched because you haven't drinking in a long time. Amen? So, how many here have that kind of desire for God? When you're really like, I am that desperate. So, do you understand what hunger and thirst means here? Yes. You're really parched. You're real. I mean, starving. Yes, you haven't eaten in days. I mean, I can see your bones popping out of your body. I don't think anybody has that problem here. So, the, the, the thirst. The thirst is, I need water. Water. I'm so thirsty. Amen. That's it. How many here have that kind of faith in God? Now, people around you are going to give you false drink. Now, to hunger and thirst is passionate. Listen, it's a passion for what you don't have. I want to go to heaven. So I keep thinking about it. Heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> so... I hunger because what I'm thinking, food, food. Every Lent comes, and I give up need or whatever. It always happens every Friday during Lent. I think of cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how I put myself to sleep? I don't count sheep. I count cheeseburgers. <laughs> One cheeseburger, two cheeseburgers, three cheeseburgers. And nobody's feeling sorry for me. <laughs> Because I just like, I could really get into a big cheeseburger right now, you know, and throw the french fries and roll them in ketchup. So there's the hunger, but that's, that's not this hunger, because I'm missing a cheeseburger. All right, everybody got that? Yes. Now, how many are passionate for what you don't have? 
we don't have heaven yet, even though the grace of God is in each of us. Amen? Amen. Now, it means that I'm going to do everything in my life to pursue this. Now, if you were really hungry, how many think you'd be looking for food right now? You wouldn't be concentrated, right? Mm. Now, when you hunger and thirst, Jesus is saying, it's impossible to be, be, be without this. So you have things, when you hunger and thirst, it's impossible. I can't live without food. I can't live without drink. Amen? Amen. So how many have that in part of your life? A amen? amen? Now, when you hunger like this, you shall, what, what does Jesus say there? You shall be what? Satisfied. Satisfied. Now, here's what the Greek means. Now, originally in the Greek it says, I am hungry. It's a strange expression. You can't even understand this in English when I write it down. I am hungry for of God. That's kind of a strange expression in Greek. I am hungry for of God. We don't speak like that, right? No. I am hungry for of God. Now, here's what that means. I can say I'm hungry for God and I'll go to church on Sunday. That's not what it means. How many know a lot of people go to church are unchanged at all? I, I, I need to praise God and go to a Wednesday prayer meeting. That's not what it means. So what is Jesus saying here by these words? I'm not hungry out of because I lack something. I'm hungry because I want it all. I want it all. Did you notice when we go to the new mammoth? Yeah. They put the cake in front. <laughs> and you know what the cake is saying every time I pass by? Eat me. Eat me. Eat me. <laughs> and so we developed a new thing now called community cake. Yeah, <laughs> we take a piece of chocolate cake, plop it in the center, and everybody has a fork and you just stare at it. <laughs> and I already know who's going for it right away. <laughs> and how many want to look? Give me a little taste, will you, huh? No, I, now, I gotta confess, I want the whole piece. I don't want you to even nibble at my piece. <laughs> okay? But we have community cake, and it makes our lives, we don't feel as guilty leaving. We feel like we don't have to go to confession right away. So. What does it mean to hunger and thirst? I am hungry. I want it all. Now, you and I were taught, properly so, when you had all your siblings, say you had eight people in your family, and you all sat down, and you got a little bit, got adobo over here, a little adobo over here, a little oh, adobo over here, a little pancit over here, a little pancit over here, a little pancit. And of course, rice was not that expensive. You go, rice, 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 rice. Amen? <laughs> But wasn't there a moment you wanted it all? Yeah. Wasn't it a moment you couldn't wait for the dessert and the salad and the soup and you just, you just wanted it all? <laughs> That's how we live perpetually under hunger and thirst. How many here hunger for Jesus that much? Now, what we've done in our Catholic system is a lot of people don't hunger like that. The majority don't. I go to church, get it over with. Mm -hmm. If you were God and you heard somebody that you may say, I'm going to get it over with. Let's go to Saturday night, get it over with. Amen? Mm -hmm. Right? How many know that would bother me? Get it over with? Yeah. If you want to get me over with, amen? <laughs> How many here really thank God I am not God? <laughs> now, what do I want? I want the righteousness of God. What does that mean? The righteousness means I want God to so live his full life through me. So, I would say some of us here are not there yet. Even though we're here this weekend. Now, here's what it means to live the Beatitudes. You ready? This is going to be hard for you to accomplish. The internal me has to be sold out 100% that the external will never bother me again. How many think you're there? The internal me is so changed, and this is what the Beatitudes do, that the external will not bother me anymore. But how many have the external bother you? Oh, it's so hot in here. <sighs> and, and then, it just bothers me. The external bothers me. Amen? Now, the external is a different world than the kingdom of God. And that world, Jesus says, what? 
passing, passing away. away. So how many want a, a life change in the Holy Spirit? You got to do all the internal. Now, what do doctors do when you give them all your ailments? They pop a pill in you. And so this stops something going on. Jesus doesn't pop anything. He gives you righteousness, his life living through you in grace. Do I hear amen? amen. amen. Now, the result is this. I will be satisfied. I will be blessed. And I will be feeding every part of me. Amen? amen. Now, when you're being fed by the Lord, you're always eating. You're a Filipino. <laughs> you're always eating you're always how many would just like to eat and eat and eat and there's no calories <laughs> amen? amen now when we see this Moses in Exodus 33 verse 18 says to God I want more please sir I want more. Oliver, Oliver. Right? Please, sir, I want more. Amen? And what happened to him? He said in Exodus 33, 18, Let me see your glory. And nobody goes into the presence of God, the belief was, and what? Lives. Nobody can see God and what? Live. Now, we have literally seen Jesus, haven't we? When we go to Eucharistic Adoration, we, and tonight we'll be really with our Lord, you're literally going to see Him. But do you hunger with Him? Do you hunger for Him? Do you desire Him? Nothing but Him. When that internal takes over, see the meekness kicking in? Yes. See now the hunger kicking in? You will be what? Satisfied. How do you know you're satisfied? Because... Um, you're so dissatisfied with what's going on. Amen? Yep. Now, you will be dissatisfied when you commit sin and you don't repent of it right away. Yeah, so you have lost your zeal for God when you commit sin and say, uh, we're all weak. You will lose your sense of being the hungering and the thirsting when you go with the others and say, it's okay. How many been there before? Now listen to me. I want to, this is going to be an earth shining statement. Hold your heart. For the rest of your life, I want everybody here, don't ever seek happiness again. I'll finish my statement. Don't ever seek happiness again. When, you, when you're hungering and thirst for righteousness, the happiness will be there. How many know it's already included? Everything that you and I desire from this life is already included in His life. I told you in Galatians 1.10 many times, stop trying to please people. It doesn't work. And your, your husbands want you to please them. Tell them from Brooklyn, forget about it. <laughs> you can't please people all the time, can you? It's impossible. If you're married 52, 53, 54 years, forget about it. No matter if she makes good Italian pasta. <laughs> Amen? <coughs> Here's what you do. You please God and everybody else is included. Amen. <coughs> Did you get that? Yes. My job is to please the Lord. And guess what you're included in? Because it tells me I've got to love you, I've got to forgive you, i got to wash your feet. I mean, all those wonderful things. <laughs> And when I do what God really wants on the internal bill, how many know when the internal bill is worked upon by the Holy Spirit? I mean, I am in heaven. And then I can say to you, good morning. I mean it. <laughs> yes. What do, what do you really long for? Amen? Now, I just want to show you something and we're done. Give you your little freshen break. The first three Beatitudes, what's the first one? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. What's the second one? Mourn, right? What's the third one? Meek. Meek. Now, when we get to the first three, it hits number four. What's number four? Bless those who hunger. Then you're going to see when it hits num Beatitude number four, then five, six, seven flow right out of this. 
They flow right out of this. So we go one, two, three. Oh, Jesus is a masterful preacher. Mm -hmm. And then he brings us to being, number four is what? Being what? Hungering and thirsting with all of me. And then, then I could do five, six, and seven. It flows right out. All of these are building blocks on one, one of them. You cannot have one without the other. Amen? Amen. Good stuff? Mm -hmm. We'll answer your question in a, in a minute. Okay? Um, now, in 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17, we have appetites. Yes? yes? And when you're upset, you eat, drink, drugs, painkillers, right? And what happens then is this. When you do all that, you're getting the world to try to solve what you can't solve because your internal clock is off. You're, you need internal medicine. Jesus, open 24 sevens, 365, 366 leap year. Internal medicine given out to people. Amen? Amen? What is all of our problems? It's a heart problem. Okay? So if, if I really want to be satisfied, now, the word for satisfaction, sat, remember that song? I can't get no satisfaction. Okay, you remember that. Right. <laughs> the word in Greek for satisfaction is called korta. Korta, korta zizo. All right? Korta, 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 zizo. Korta, zizo. Now, what it means to be satisfied it means to be, I'm really, really, really full. And when you're really full, if you eat, how many have been full and you kept eight eating? Yeah. So a little gluttony action there, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Amen? I was on a boat cruise and I ordered a piece of chocolate cake and the lady next to me stole my chocolate cake and went, she just says, Psh, I my cake. <laughs> Don't you ever steal my chocolate cake. So, so the cortazo, when you're satisfied, here's what Jesus says. When you hunger and thirst for a rice, you will really, really be full. That's what the Greek word means there. Amen? Psalm 107, verse 19. And when, when you're really full, guess what happens? You ready for this? You want to see a miracle in your life? All of your senses come together. You're seeing, you're hearing, you're touching. They all come together. And everything, there's a miracle that happens in you. How many want that miracle? How many need that miracle? So these three flow together. Hit this one, that who we are for the internal medicine, and the others will flow right from this. Amen? Are you getting this? And then th this will be strong action. will be continued. We get, we get righteousness. That means I'm right with God. That means I'm saved by God. That means he, He's... He's sharing me with the Holy Spirit. And then from this moment forward, when I have cortazo, I only have one appetite. I only have one appetite. That's why my family has a difficult time with me. I only have one appetite. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus in the morning. Oh, oh, oh. Right? And how many know you, you and I, some of you are like me, right? You only have one appetite now, right? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And can your family hold that? No. Mm -hmm. So, how many know your appetites change? And guess right. Guess what happens? You taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Now we're going to take a 15-minute break a room, and we'll we'll chance for over to the church. Okay. So you got 15 minutes. And then we'll go for Mass, and then we'll marry Jesus. Yes, Sister Bernadette. Father, well, how you said one, one and three go together, goes into four, and out of four comes... Five, six, and seven. And it's just like um, in Mass when you say, uh, in me, through me, and out of me. You got it. And the Holy Spirit comes in me. You got it. My mother said you're a smart girl. <laughs> and Mohammed liked you, and the, and the camel liked you. <laughs> Good stuff. How many received a little bit of a challenge? Are you challenged? Yes. All right, we'll, we'll take 15 minutes. We'll go to Holy Mass for today.